We all have the games we're nostalgic about. The ones we sunk hours into, just the ones we're playing as a kid, and they kind of lodge themselves in our brain for a little bit too long. Whether we've been actually played in a long time, or we just never beat them because we were a kid and stupid. But somehow they've just like lodged themselves in and refused to let go. And I decided to play one of those games from my little archive of games from my childhood. And I decided the very aptly named Modern Yui Online game, a downloadable Lego Bionicle game that was on my parents' computer for a long time, which was mainly because I was addicted to anything Bionicle as a kid, and I have like a weirdly fond memory of this game. But also, I have a very specific memory that I never beat it. I don't really know why. Well, I do now, but at the time, I was just like, I'm just a dumb kid who doesn't know how to figure out what to do. I'm the problem. I'm the problem. But it turns out this game is just bad. And the long and short of it is that the Montanui Online game is it's one that wants to be a choose-your-adventure story, but if you go a little bit too far into the choose-your-own-adventure, the game says, stop, stop, you're not there yet, you're not there yet, hold on. And then you have to spend an hour figuring out where to go because the game is actually in chapters and wants you to figure it out instead of just letting you play each point, even though they really aren't that connected for like the first half. But some of this is that the game has chapters, so on the menu you can pick a certain chapter to start at, which in theory would work because it lets you pick any place to be a starting point, but it, it doesn't work because it leaves you just out to dry, basically, where you have no idea where you're going, no idea what you need to progress. You are just wandering around in circles, just like, where am I? What am I doing? And all of this, he's not including the fact that, which I think is a kind of cool decision, all of the visual language in the game, for the tunnels and signs and stuff, is just in Bionicle's native language, so if you don't know what the thing means you're just like these are a bunch of circles with things on them like what am i supposed to do but i do think this is a cool choice because it's kind of just a power move to expect your audience to just know the language and it's only for like four or five actual things so it doesn't really matter that much but on the whole that's probably the smallest problem the biggest problem is that most of these chapters are blocked by a very specific object from a very specific place that you are never told about. You just have to scan the screen enough and be like, oh, there's a thing that looks a little odd, and then pick it up or talk to the person. For me, this just was dumb, and I hated it. And the biggest example was there's a section where you have to get across a pool of lava to fix the pump that makes the lava stop. To do this, you have to go get a lava board, which is at a NPC in Takoro, who walks across the screen, but it takes a few seconds for him to appear, so if you miss him that first time, you just don't know he's there, which is what happened to me. I didn't know he was there. I'm the one who was just like, where am I supposed to go? And I'm explaining this to you as, like, this is how you do it. You were never told this. You just are expected to put two and two together and be like, oh, I have a lava board. I should use it on the lava board. But I never had the lava board. I just was circling the same hour going through the caves, just being like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? And then I figure it out and I'm like, wow. I feel like an idiot. But I'm not the idiot. It's the game. It's their fault, not mine. But this is bringing me to the, like, conversation in gaming where it's like, video games hold your hand too much, they're babying you. But here I really would have just loved a little hand-holding to just know what I needed to progress the story, or just where I needed to go. Because after about an hour of basically just walking in circles, being like, where, what's going on, how do I do this thing, I just went to a walkthrough because I was like, I'm never going to finish this game if I don't. Because I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I need. I don't know how to progress. I just know that I still have to. And the first one I turned to was like a narrative version of a walkthrough. 
they're like, I trucked across Takoro and I found this specific item, which g go off, I guess, but it's not really a walkthrough because it was immensely unhelpful. So then I just went to a video walkthrough and went, wow, this is so much nicer and so much easier. But it is also, this game just expects you to know where to go, especially near the end where it's like, get all these Mythmore and you don't know which one you need, you just gotta kinda go somewhere and pick them all up along the way. And then there was one little thing I just have to mention because it's it's stupid and I hated it and I thought it was really important, is there's a little like side quest where they're like, oh, go bring this item to someone, they'll figure it out, and you can get a cool item for it. It was just an item to watch the cutscenes. I have YouTube.com. In the year 2023, I have YouTube.com. And also the menu has the cutscenes. But it was like, I guess to download them because there's like a save button. So I guess it was like, if you want to for some reason have the cutscene for this game. But like, I thought this was going to be like a story important item. But it's like, no, you can just watch the movies. And I'm like, okay, thanks. That was like an hour of my time I wasted. Overall, this felt like one of the few times where the nostalgia goggles were just, like, ripped off my face. Because I came in and was like, I'm going to love this game. I have some, like, fond memories of it. But after, like, the first hour of being like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I was just actively loathing this whole time. I was like, please, just let it end. Just let it end. I'm sick of wandering around aimlessly trying to figure out where I have to go. But I also never stopped because I was like, I can finish this game. It's a short game. The speed run's only like 40 minutes. And then I just like willed myself to the end because I just followed the walkthrough and said, please just let me out. I just want to be, be done. But then I finished it and I was like, why did I play this game? Which the answer was I wanted to like make videos returning to like games from my childhood to just see how they held up. And uh, answer number one, not good. But there are two things I like about this game, and none of them are about the gameplay. The first one is the cutscenes for the Toa, especially Tahu's, because it has like this really distinct atmosphere where Tahu's is like horror villain, and it's just lit really nicely and color really cool. And I'm like, this this rules. I love it a lot. And the second one isn't really a positive, but it is really funny. So that basically is the same thing which is in the Liwa section of the game, before the like flying mini game they have you do. They have a remix of Flight of the Valkyries, and it is, it's so funny. They really thought they had something, and then it just sounds like this. There's also a section where the people of Lycoro have been kidnapped and enslaved by the bugs that captured them, and our task is to just end slavery, which is a much bigger topic than I was expecting from a game made for children. And the other one is that in the last chapter, you're essentially told like, yeah, you might all die in this fight, but you know, you're you're dying to protect everybody, so like, have fun with that. Which is like, wow, not expecting that guy. But on the whole, this entire game is just not, not good. It's a product that takes time in a way, but that time kind of sucks. It really like wants you to explore, but exploring to me is different from just like throwing me in the middle of an ocean and being like, which continent's closer? Go find it. It's like eventually I'll get there, but like I am going to take forever to get there. But at the end of the day, I don't think I'll probably ever play this game again, unless in like 10 years my nostalgia goggles can like put themselves back on and be like, yeah, this game's actually good, let's go play it again. But I'm still glad I like went back to a game that I had nostalgia for and been like, hmm, is this game actually good? Because I could have just got my whole life being like, yeah, no, this is a great game. I played it when I was like eight and it was fantastic. But now I have played it and I can say, no, it's not fantastic. It's a bad game. I don't want to play it again. 